A lot of us have fond memories of when we were proposed to by our husbands. We remember the anticipation of going into the next chapter of our lives and everything that comes with it. Women in biblical times weren't any different. Today we're continuing our series on women in the Bible with Rachel. Her marriage to Jacob took very long time to happen. She also struggled with having children for years after getting married. Lauren, can hmm. you fill in our viewers who might not be familiar with this story? Sure. Well, so basically, Rachel was seen by Jacob, and he was like, I, I want to marry her. Let me go talk to her dad, who's also my uncle, mm. and Awkward. make this happen. Mm -hmm. And um, he worked seven years to marry Rachel, but Laban, Rachel's father, tr tricked him, tricked trickster. the trickster. Trickster. These, a bunch of tricksters in this family. And he gave his first daughter, as was their custom, Leah, instead of Rachel. And he didn't find out till the wedding night. She was like, surprise, <laughs> it's I'm not me. Rachel. <laughs> and so he wound up marrying both women. But he loved, the Bible tells us that he loved Rachel. And unfortunately about Leah, it doesn't tell us too much other than that she wasn't, he wasn't in love with her and that she had weak eyes, the poor thing. <laughs> Um, and Rachel <laughs> was not able to have children at first, and Leah was, so they're right off the bat were some big honeymoon issues yeah. going on. Yeah. It's a very good lesson in not letting your control mm -hmm. and your bad attitude toward circumstances that you're yeah. in um, hinder you from serving God to the fullest right. because he has such good things waiting for you on the yeah. other side. And just like Rachel, Rachel gave birth it took a while, but she gave birth to Joseph. And we all know about right. Joseph that, you know, between Rachel and Leah, they gave birth to the 12 tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Joseph freed, you know, Israel. And he has such, he's such a biblical champion. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and that came from Rachel. And God had really great things in store for her, but how much smoother would life have gone for her if she would have surrendered right. to God mm -hmm. from the from jump right. and been like, you know what? These are my circumstances. Mm -hmm. These are what my choices got me. Let me surrender to God. So don't, I think it's such a good lesson that you don't need to let your attitude and your circumstances mm -hmm. bring you to a point where you're not fully surrendered yeah. to God. Yeah. Because yeah. there's something good on the other side of the wilderness. Yeah. You know? And they missed out on what could have been a really beautiful sisterhood with yeah. another. People can take a lot of things from you. Mm -hmm. There's many people that have had their innocence stripped away from them, mm. whatever that may be. No one can take your joy. Mm. It's true. Your joy, if you let that go, that is your choice. So mm. she could have mm -hmm. hung on to her joy, yeah. celebrated with her sister, say, God, I know the promises you have for me. Mm -hmm. I love you. I surrender to mm -hmm. you. Yeah. I know I'm going to have a, a baby one day mm -hmm. and lived in joy. How much better would her life have been yep. living in joy? But think of the stress. Yeah. That comes on you when you live in bitterness and hatred and jealousy. Like it's just a yucky way to live. Right. Yeah. And so if anything, for me looking at this story is choose joy and keep your joy and don't let anyone take it because right. they can't. You give that away. That's good. Yeah. And just to expound on that, it was really a, a competition, which is it's mm -hmm. kind of odd. Like when you think about each other, like if, if Dean and I competed like who could have the most kids faster? I definitely would have won. But <laughs> it's just funny to think about, like, that's not normal. Like, you, you don't, and it's hard because you have to go back culturally, too. Right. But just to see her kind of throw her servant or her, I don't know what are, what they were called. I think it was her servant, Bilha, in his face mm -hmm. and say, here, just get her pregnant. So this can kind of be my kid. Yeah. Uh, so it was interesting to see that, but it was also interesting to see how, and it, to see how, and later in Genesis chapter 30, God said that God remembered Rachel and he listened to her mm -hmm. and he enabled her to conceive. So I think, you know, you look at that and despite what she did, now I think it's hard to say is Bill Ha out of the will of God or not. Because it was a cultural thing to use your servant to provide offspring. But despite that, you know, that issue, God, God blessed her. 
Well, here's what I love about the Bible. The, the Bible has real life relatable stories. Oh, you're having trouble yeah. in your yes. family. You can read the story. Oh, you, you, in the, these things really happen, and it's sad. I also think that this, my personal opinion is, stories like this that are in the Bible are to show us how to not behave as well. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be a Rachel. You want to love your sister and celebrate. One thing with Brittany and I is we celebrate each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. When she's down, I'm down with her. Mm -hmm. When I remember when you got pregnant with London, I was so, it was almost like I got pregnant. I was like, <gasps> oh, I'm so excited. Like I just wanted to explode. Mm -hmm. And I remember when you had London holding her and waiting for you guys to all leave the room so I could snuggle her and be like, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I can't imagine not wanting to be in her life or hating her. Just yeah. it, it, it's, it really shows you, okay, here's how we can act and here's how we shouldn't act. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. Share your thoughts on this topic with us in the comments. And don't forget to check out FISM.TV slash Outspoken for some more exclusive content. We will see you next time.